Welcome to Fiber Hustle. My name is Chip and this is the Side Hustle Quilting Edition. Tonight we're going to work on the Allison Glass Trinket Sew Along. Today's uh, day one, so that means block one and that one's called lines one. It's going to be this little guy right here. It's a four and a half, I'm sorry, a four and a half by four and a half or a four inch by four inch finished block. It's all done through paper piecing and I actually haven't done it for about a year, but We'll see how it goes. So grab your favorite beverage and let's get started. Okay, we're back. We're starting with this, uh, the trinket so along. There's a couple of tools that you're gonna need. Uh, you're gonna need thread, and I'm using a Gooderman 40 weight thread, cotton. You're going to need bobbin thread, and one thing that I do is I get plenty of uh, extra bobbin thread all set up for myself. That way, if I run out of bobbin thread, I just grab another and keep going. So, I've already got mine loaded in the machine, so I don't need this. Another thing you're going to need is, of course, the printed patterns. So, um, you're going to have each one has its own layout. And I'm going to start out with just cutting the first one out. All I have to do is slice and trim this piece of paper. And this is going to be block one. Next thing we're working on, next thing I'm going to work on is actually fabric selection. For this one, there's three pieces to the um, block, and I think I'm just going to use two colors. I was digging this Allison Glass pink, and let's go ahead and use some old stash that I have. Aaron would be so proud that I'm not going out and buying any fabric for this. So, oh, I got just the one. We're going to use this hot green. How about that? Easter's coming. All right, so we've got our fabric ch chosen, and we just have to cut it. With paper piecing, you're actually not required to have exact sizes. You want a little bit more fabric than you're actually going to use. And you know what? I didn't iron mine. Another thing you're going to need is a dry iron. And I'm going to use this little guy that I got for Christmas. And you just want to make sure pressing is done at every step. So even before I cut, I'm going to go ahead and iron. I actually like ironing. I don't know why. I think it's relaxing. And... It's just a good way of getting your your, uh, your frustrations out. Plus, when you iron, you're just making sure that everything's going to look tip-top shape. Because at every point, you go and sew, and then you iron. Okay, so we've got this piece all ironed. Now, we need to get to the pink. No comments. All right, so this is a lot of fabric I have. And you know what? I'm going to go reckless with it and just cut a nice big old piece. I'm going to get a ruler, a big ruler, and I'm just going to cut what I think I'm going to need. Um, that should do it. You don't have to be perfect. That's the one nice thing about paper piecing. Okay. This, we don't need. Lord willing, this is going to be enough. But let's go ahead and look at our block. Yeah, so this block, that's more than enough fabric. Give it a quick press. And we are ready to go. Now, with paper piecing, you actually are going to need something very, very specific. It's called an add a quarter. And it's this little guy right here. 
So as you're, you're sewing along on the paper, this has got a little ledge that is going to catch that fabric. And then when you're folding it over, you just cut along and it's leaving just a quarter of an inch. And that's why it's called the add a quarter. You've got to have this for your project. Okay, so another thing that's helpful when you're paper piecing is to either use a window, it's nighttime and that's not an option, or if you can, get yourself a cheapo light box. It's real, they, they're so thin now, it's not like art school where they used to be so thick. All right, so what we do is we're gonna lay lines number one, the block down onto our light box. And the way I'm gonna do this one is I'm gonna have the pink on both sides, and then I'm gonna have that bright green in the center. So we're gonna call the, um, the middle block, we're gonna lay our fabric down to that as one. Now, again, I have way much, a lot of fabric, so I'm just need, gonna need this little sliver, and you know what? If I'm crazy, ugh, I'm not strong enough. I was gonna just rip it. But we'll go ahead and cut it. Blah. Okay, so we've got just a little sliver. It's all we need. And what you're doing is you're actually trying to see through, and this is why you want the light box. You're gonna be able to faintly see that you have, um, you have the fabric in completely covered over that portion that it needs to belong to. Then, because this is just a solid, it doesn't matter what direction it goes, but it is gonna matter when you're going to finish it. So I'm gonna actually lay face down. I'm trying to remember, it's this way. So I'm gonna lay it face down. We're actually gonna end up sewing along this line between one and between one and two. And you wanna actually have overage so that when it's sewn, it's gonna become like this. Okay, make sense? Hopefully it does. Now, if you're not comfortable transferring the fabric from your light box over to the machine, feel free to actually just pin it. I'm gonna go rogue and I'm not gonna pin it. All right, so one tip that I have, I haven't even threaded yet. One tip that I have for you is that when, have you ever noticed that your, let's see if I can get it off. This little guy that holds the thread, it gets sticky. And so I think that's disgusting. And it can actually make your um, your thread not un unspool uh, quite neatly. So what I like to do is I'll take an awl and then I'll put that in where inside there's no sticky, or actually there's a lot of sticky. And so right here where it's gonna be really sticky, I just put my awl in all the way, <laughs> And then that way, all that sticky goes to the inside and it's never gonna touch your bobbin holder or your, your thread holder, spool holder, that's what it's called. So now I've got my thread and we're going to put the thread holder. And for those who may not know, you actually want the thread to go off like this. You don't want it to actually get stuck. So. You got your, your spool, I'm gonna put it this way. Now, this is a sew along. I'm not a great teacher, but I'm gonna show you how I do things. So, always, oh, and I made a mistake. You always want to thread your machine with the foot up. That way you're opening up those tension plates. And we're gonna thread, we're gonna thread. And then, lovely automatic threader that wants to work with me. Great. So now, pull your thread through. Oh my lord. Here we go. Great. Okay, so you got your thread. I know I've already threaded the bottom, but one thing that you could do is, oh, you know what, I forgot, I have GoGo. This episode should be brought to you by Red Bull. So, uh, I've got a fresh needle. I've oiled the machine, and I'm actually using a walking foot, which actually is gonna help grab the, the fabric evenly. 
Okay, so we want to actually uh, have enough fabric that's going to cover this with the green and enough of this in the pink. Now, we're actually putting face up because this is going to get sewn down and then it's going to it's going to write write itself. So uh, I think we're good. I don't like some of that there. So I'm going to actually move this all over and then. If you're not comfortable, you can go ahead and pin at this point. That way you know that the fabric's not gonna move anywhere. Um, I'm pretty comfy with what, what's going on. Yeah, I like it. Um, all you have to do is pinch it and then bring it over to the sewing machine. And then one thing that I've noticed is that there's a couple of different opinions on how to paper piece, whether you start off right on the edge or if it's gonna be, or, or whether you should back tack I really like to back tack. It just makes me sure that the power, that the thread's gonna stay. It's locked. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we're just sewing along this line between one and two. Okay. And don't go too fast. There we go. So we're just sewing along on that line and making sure that we don't go too fast. All right. So now um, I'm going to lock that stitch and then I'm going to cut my thread and then comes the big reveal. We have one and two. So now this is the right side of the project and we don't have to worry about really what's going on at uh, on this side at this point. So what we can do is Take a roller and just cut that out just so it's not really in our way and besides that we're going to need more of that and I need a stronger don't say anything about the way I'm cutting okay I love when people say, oh, you're so good. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm not. Okay, this is a dull blade. I'm so bad about replacing my, my blades. Okay, so now this is gonna be the first part. And then what we wanna do is worry about block one to block three. So what that'll happen is now we're going to almost do the same thing. We're going to come over and then we have our pattern like this. And you see that line right there? That's the new line that we need to sew on. So we're going to make our fabric come right here and then that's going to get flipped over. Make sense? Okay. So. I am going to guesstimate that that is good. And then checking to make sure I have enough fabric over here, which I do. So you can pin it. I'm not what you call a pinner. Maybe I should be. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to the, the machine. And then we are gonna sew our second Rockstar line. Okay, and let's start off with a knot, and we're gonna sew on that line. Okay, give it another knot, and cut our thread. And if we, all oh, is going well, We've done most all of our sewing. I mean, like literally, this is one block a day. Okay, so we're done with our light box and all we have to do is square it up. So I'm gonna come back here on the front side and I'm going to cut from this line and this is where I'm gonna use a little bit more elbow grease. I wasn't doing that before. One. Okay, that was one cut. Ah, ah, ah. And two 
Ah, ah, ah. Make sure my fabric's right. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Y'all didn't catch me on this. I need iron. Let's do that first. Oh, I didn't drink Red Bull. Aaron just told me. Honey, this was supposed to be a one, uh, one Red Bull project. I must be an angel because Red Bull gives you wings. All right, so I'm ironing. And that also sets the seam. And makes it all beautiful. Okay, so I wasn't, I, I, I was actually ironing. I wasn't pressing, but I'm not um, stretching the fabric. So some people were like, you're not supposed to press. Supposed to iron it. Well, you know what? Me so pretty someday. For today, this is how I do it. Okay, so there's that. And we're almost there. Do you guys ever watch what the uh, WTF knitting? He loves to sing. I should start singing when I'm doing my projects. Maybe mine would be more hateful music because some things piss me off when my rotary cutter is not working. And we're almost there. Okay, so now, not bad for not reading the directions, but we have one beautiful block done. Ain't that something? All right, so now we've got one beautiful block finish. Again, this was the Allison Glass Trinket Block One Lines One. We're going to do one block a day. I hope you had fun, and we'll see you next time.